Hey everybody, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today I'm going to show you after you've gone ahead and designed your ring how to make it look somewhat more realistic so that you can send images off to your customers and get approvals for jewelry design. This is uh, what it would look like in your 3D viewport after you've gone ahead and done the design and after you're done with that, you want to render it. So I'm going to show you how to get it to, instead of looking like this, to get it to look more like this. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we have to cover is to get yourself some procedural materials that you'll need to uh, use for the rendering of your object. There is, in the description box below, a link to some procedural materials that you can get online, um, approximately 800 procedural materials. Uh, this is the website where you can go get them, and it is a free download. So you can download this, and this is Blender 3.0 Asset Library Ready. So I'm just going to put that aside, and we're going to start working on that. Again, the description is in the link below. If you do not know how to get those uh, hooked into the Asset Blender, I'll put a link uh, up here where you can go watch a video where I show you how to do that. So here I've got my model, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're just going to zoom in here, take a look at this model, and I've got diamonds. Um, these are going to be sapphires. These little ones are going to be diamonds, and the ring is going to be in uh, white gold or sterling silver. So I'm going to use these procedural materials, and to do that, I'm going to come over here, put my little cursor down here. You can see it turns into a little plus sign. Click and hold with my left mouse button and drag that up. It brings up a new window. In that new window, I'm going to come over here, click on this little drop-down box here, come over to the Asset Browser. In my Asset Browser, you'll see it says Current File, which there's nothing, there's no assets there. So I'm going to come over and I'm going to use the 800 material pack and that should bring up all the materials to be used in that pack it might take a couple seconds depending on your computer and here's the materials and I'll just scroll down you can see there are literally hundreds of them okay so to start with I'm gonna come over here to material view or viewport shading so we can see our model now there are no materials assigned to this particular model right now and I've used jewel craft to design this so these uh, stones are all linked by style so first things first, let's add in the diamonds. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select diamonds. And it'll bring up the diamond material. And I can select whatever one I want to use. I'm gonna select, uh, let's say, how about plain diamond? And I'm gonna click this. And I'm gonna drag it over to where I want the diamonds. Before I do that, I'm gonna zoom in just to make sure I'm getting a healthy view of the diamond that I'm applying it to. So it's just basically click, hold, and drag and apply it to the diamond that you want. It might take a couple seconds, but you should see the material change on your 3D viewport. And it changed the wrong one, so let's hit Control-Z or Command-Z, and let's try that again. So what I'm gonna do is, to make this a little easier, um, sometimes you can't get that to come over, so if you can't get that to apply to the right part here, I'm just gonna select my ring shank here, this one here, and I'm gonna press H to hide that. You can see now it just gives me the diamonds, and I'll grab this diamond material. Um, I'm gonna come over here, plain diamond, drag that onto the diamond, and you can see it changes all the diamonds over there. Okay, press Alt-H, or Option-H on a Mac, and it'll bring in the ring again. And we also wanna apply the material to this particular diamond here, so let's grab that same material and apply it to the diamond. There we go. So now those are diamonds. We also want these pieces here to be, dim uh, to be diamond shaded. Again, I'm going to select my ring. I'm going to hide it. And now I've got those exposed. Again, we'll grab our materials and just apply it to those diamonds. And let's take this one. We're going to hide that. And with that selected, I can kind of go over here and apply that material. So now all the diamonds on my model are shaded with the diamond shading or the uh, procedural material. Again, I'm going to press Alt-H to unhide all my models. Okay, so now what we want to do is apply a sapphire material to these princess cut diamonds. So I'm going to grab this particular ring here. I'm going to press H to hide it just so that I know I'm going to get my shading or materials applied to the right stones. And I'm going to select here blue. And I'm going to pick out, uh, let's see here, a fake blue uh, stone. It's really not made for stones, but we're going to use this kind of glass material for that particular 
princess cut diamond. And I just get it on there and there we go. So now that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now all my stones are properly shaded and I have to add some white metal or white gold to the uh, ring shanks. Okay, to do that, I'm gonna click this little X here to unfilter and I'm gonna select gold and see what comes up. Now you can see under gold, we get white gold, yellow gold, you get different forms with different textures. Um, typically, if you're gonna do a yellow gold ring, you could, do, you could select this or white gold. I think what I'm gonna show you today is basically just how to do this in yellow gold. So I'm gonna come over here and apply that to my model. Makes that look white. I'm gonna press Alt H to bring in back the band. I'm gonna bring in my yellow gold here and select the band, put it over that. Again, we're gonna drag and drop the gold material onto this ring. And then one more piece here is this little circle here. And I'm gonna do that. And that gives us all our uh, shading options. And I'm gonna come over here and just shade smooth and make sure that this looks more realistic. So shading smooth will give you much better uh, reflections in your workspace and it makes the object look a little bit more uh, realistic. I'm also going to apply an edge split modifier to these. So I'll do that one at a time. I'm gonna select this particular ring shank here and I'll go down to my modifiers tab with that selected and I'll come over to edge split. And what it does is it shades, the, it shades the object smooth but gives you kind of a sharp edge. And that's kind of what I want. I don't want a soft edge on these particular pieces but I do need them to look a little bit smooth. So that's a little tip or a trick that you can use. Now when I press zero on my keyboard, it gives me camera view and then I can zoom in and zoom out and get my object centered in my camera. And under my sample settings for the uh, render properties, you can see I have sample set to 50. Now you don't have to, you can set that up or down depending on what you want, but for my render settings, I'm just gonna use 50 for this particular demonstration. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and render this in cycles. You can see I'm in cycles using supported. I'm using this on an older Mac, but it'll work with just about, um, whether you're using Windows or a Mac. So I've got this all done here and you can see in our render, this is set up for um, HD qual or HD resolution and you can see it just doesn't look very realistic. For some reason, it's, it's giving us you know nice looking stones but the gold doesn't have any environmental reflections to it. Kind of looks a little awkward. So let's go try to make this look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of here and I'm gonna come over to my uh, 3D viewport again and I'm gonna set up a little bit of a scene. So I already have a scene set up uh, where I have my camera, my points, uh, I'm using point lights. So if I zoom out here and I unhide my settings here, you can see I've got a point light here and it's kind of aiming at that area where the ring is. And I've got another point light over here to give me two different light views. Uh, aiming at my model. Okay, so that's part one. So you should set up a scene where you have some lights and camera view or one camera aiming at your model. So if again, if I hit zero on my keyboard, it comes in and if I zoom out, you can see the two lights aiming at that model. Let's turn that off. Okay, I'm gonna hide my scene selection or my camera and lights because I don't really wanna look at those and I don't wanna accidentally select them. The next thing I wanna do is set up kind of like a base or something that this would sit on. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna add in um, a plane. So Shift A, mesh, plane, and then I'm gonna size that up, S, and I'm gonna do, uh, let's say 80. So I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger and drop that down below my ring. Okay, so let's come in here and look at this from the uh, camera perspective. And let's come over here. So what I wanna do next is take this particular edge of my plane and this edge of my plane and kind of bring those up. So to do that, I'm gonna go and select my plane, hit tab on my keyboard, press two so I have edge select. I'm gonna select this edge here, hold the shift key down, select that edge, and then I'm gonna hit extrude and then press ZZ twice and bring that straight up, just like so. Okay, with that done, uh, I'm gonna turn off my camera view. We're gonna come over here. This is the view from the camera. And I'm going to grab this particular edge here, hold the shift key down and select the two edges on the back sides and press control B, move my mouse in and give those a bevel. And then with your scroll wheel, you're just gonna round those off just about like so. Okay, that sets up kind of like a, a shadow box that we can use for our view. Now I'm gonna go back into camera view, zoom back in 
and just aim my model or put my model approximately in the center of the screen. Okay, so that's done. Now, this is going to give us an interesting look, but it's still not going to give us a perfectly uh, realistic render. And the reason being is we need to set up a, a few more things. The first thing we need to do is apply a material. And I'll give you a, for instance, if we come over here and we look at this, you can see our plane, um, while the gold is looking a little bit better, the plane has no material, it has no reflections to it. So what we're going to do is apply a new material to that plane, come back over to We'll go back over to viewport shading and I am going to turn off my camera view. I'm going to go back and bring up my materials that we have in that 800 material pack. And I'm going to clear that out and I'm just going to select a material that would kind of look good like a tabletop or a base. And I'm just going to scroll down until I find something that I like. And something that's not going to detract from our model. How about this, this car paint finish? I'm going to drag that onto the plane and see what happens. Again, it might take a few seconds, and there we go. Gives us a little bit of a reflection, and I'm not sure I like that reflection. Um, again, we can go back and look at this in rendered view and see what it looks like. It's a little bit on the dark side. I'm going to get rid of that and come back down here and just keep looking for something that meets my fancy. I don't really want a mirror finish, but a mirror finish might be interesting. Let's just take that and see what that looks like. Well, it's definitely giving us, you know, some some scene reflections, which is nice. That might not be too bad. Come back over here to shade view, and there we go. I'm going to bring this up a little bit just so that I get that almost touching my ring. There we go. Okay. Now, that being done, I'm going to come back and hit my camera view so that I'm making sure that I'm in the camera position. And... With those simple changes, let's just take a look at what it looks like when we render. Okay, so here's our denoised rendering, and you can see it looks pretty good. We still have a little bit of issues with the you know, gold. It doesn't quite look perfectly real, and maybe there's another thing that we can do to, to fix that. However, um, when we get the reflections and the shadows in the background, that also tricks the eye into thinking that this is much more realistic than it would be if you didn't have that. So we're going to try one more thing. And the other thing I'm going to try is to give this kind of an environmental setting. So I'm going to come over to my uh, world properties here. And here you can see I have just a background color. And I'm going to change that to be something else. Instead of a background color, I'm going to click this little yellow dot here, come over to an environmental texture. And now we can use an HDR image. And I have some HDRs, but you can get, your, you can get an HDR image anywhere. Um, first of all, I'm going to select uh, maybe this background scene, which would give us kind of a a room full of light and I'm going to leave these settings all the same and let's go ahead and give this a quick render. Okay, so in our second version of the render with an environmental texture, you can see using the HDR envir environmental texture, we get somewhat of a more realistic look. Now our model still does have some uh, flat uh, surfaces and it is kind of sharp, which does give us kind of the illusion that it's not real. However, the environment's looking real, so it's a much more realistic depiction. I'm going to come back into my modeling mode here. I'm just going to grab this particular ring, this particular side here. I'm going to come over and I'm going to apply a remesh modifier to this. So we'll add in a remesh modifier. And I'm going to bring that up because I want it to be remeshed before I sharpen it. And I'm going to do smooth. I'm going to bring this up to 9. And that should give me a, a little bit of a better, well, let's bring that up to 10. Okay, so by adding that remesh modifier, what I've done is I've sharpened up my edges, but still given them a little bit of a, a, a bevel edge. So I'm going to do that on this particular ring also on the other side. And I'll go ahead and add that in and set that up. We'll go to bring this up here so it's ahead of our smoothing. We're going to turn that on to smooth. Going to change this to 1. And again, we'll go to 9 on the smooth scale. And now I think our ring is going to model a lot better. So let's just take a look at that. And this is definitely going to be my final render.
This is the final version of rendering with both the modifiers for smoothing and remeshing. And you can see it did make a significant difference in our rendering option. So you can see here the environment settings, the lighting settings, uh, having a background that the object can sit on also helps you because you can have projected shadows and things like that. Also screen reflections it makes a big deal when you were doing a render, especially for jewelry and having the right materials. Guys, I hope you like this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And if you want to get notified every time I upload a new video, subscribe and hit that little notification bell. And every time I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Thanks for watching and have a great day.